Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, in today's episode, I would like to share a story with you. Inshallah, we can take some lessons from this story. And there's a brother from Pakistan travels to Saudi Arabia in order to find a job. And he works in a factory. And whilst he's working in a factory, he uh, receives the news from back home. Uh, mother's not well. She has to have a kidney operation. And as a result of this, brother has to send back home 7,000 rials. So what does the brother do? He goes back to factory, ask money from his friends. They say no. And then he tries to get money from the various different places such as banks. And again, uh, he gets the answer no. So as a result of this um, difficult circumstance, he becomes very desperate. And as a desperate situation, what does he do? He decides to go out and steal it. So he decides to go on uh, rob houses. So first night he goes and robs a house. He's successful, he managed to get something to sell. And second night he goes out to steal. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when someone steals, Allah gives them chance. So eventually the people that steal, they get caught. And on the second night, he goes into this house and short while later, police turns up, they'll arrest him and they'll take him away to the police station. And he said he stayed in the police station for a few hours and after that, that he was taken out, he was brought back to the house that he was stealing. And he couldn't understand it, he found it really strange. So he was waiting, waiting, waiting and then this sheikh come to him and said to him, Oh my son, it's a Fajr time, let's, let's pray Fajr. So what happens? He prays this morning prayer. After they done the concluded the morning prayer, and this sheikh asks this uh, brother a question. Oh my son, why have you stolen from me? Why did you start to steal from me? And his answer was, he said, the reason I'm trying to steal from me, I've become very desperate with the circumstance that my mom is sick. So I have to send her 7,000 rials I need it to in order to fulfill the operation in order to save her life and upon hearing this upon hearing this the sheikh turns around tells his servant uh, give this man 9,000 rials subhanallah Akbar. not only he forgives him he also gives him money in order to help his situation in and this is something we have to be mindful as a Muslim that forgiveness always beats the punishment like if you show if you're in a position to punish somebody uh, in this kind of scenario and this is the sheikh which is knowing no other than the one of the best scholar of islam which we had sheikh bin bas and uh, he was himself in a position that he could have said like any other people would say that this person should be punished but what did he do he showed um, mercy and kindness uh, to this individual, which takes us to the, the early generations. Where did they get the examples from? From the early generation, like the Sahaba, uh, the story we can tell about uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhum. Uh, obviously, the long, cut the long story short, he swore off uh, for not helping uh, the certain individual which they backbited about our mother of the believers and uh, he swore do not to help them again but what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said in the Quran and in these verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Abu Bakr Sadiq uh, he reprimands him and says to him, uh, "Forgive and overlook." And do you not wish? Do you not wish that Allah Subhanahu wa should forgive you? For Allah is of forgiving and merciful. So from this example, uh, that what does Abu Bakr Sadiq do? He goes out and he forgives this individual uh, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Why? Because the way we treat others, we will show mercy towards our Muslim brothers and sisters. What happens? Allah Subhanahu wa will similarly will treat us in a similar manner. So finally, I just want to mention about the Mu'adh ibn Jabal. When he was asked, how do you actually prepare for the Ramadan? And he answered this question. He said, when before the Ramadan come, what we will do, we remove the hatred. We remove the animosity. 
we remove any type of ill feelings we would have towards any other human beings like our Muslim brother sister from our hearts so what that what then they would do they will enter the month of Ramadan with a pure heart and this is ultimately lesson for all of us to remove the hatred to remove the um, ill feelings we would have for our fellow Muslim beings and we forgive them and we overlook it for, for their mistakes and we as a Muslim as always we say have the pure heart a pure heart means that the heart that free from the jealousy envy hatred towards another fellow be being Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh